Lois, dock in the windows. I think the tension is getting to you, dear. Have you even eaten yet this morning? Breakfast. How I miss sitting down to a nice, carefree breakfast. Will anything ever be carefree again? Neville, please be honest. Is there any end in sight? I've almost gathered enough, and then I'll be out from under. <gasps> what is it? They're on to me. Whatever you do, don't involve the police. I love you, Lois. Neville! Computer, direct incoming call to Watson Remote. I have it! Latest news. Chief Inspector Grayson raids empty room. Details on demand. <sighs> Phone interruptions, news interruptions. It's no wonder I can't play this thing. <sighs> Proceed. In an effort to clip the wings of the elusive mobsters known as the Night Ravens, Chief Inspector Grayson of New Scotland Yard stormed their suspected headquarters last night, only to find they had already flown the coop. Am I embarrassed? No. Angry and determined, yes. Their days of stealing from this city are over. The added heat has apparently begun to splinter the group. One of the few known Raven members, Zuba, was last seen 38 days ago and is presumed missing. In other news, New London is suffering its 63rd day of unrelenting fog. Weather details on demand. News off. Maestro off. Holmes! <clears throat> Maestro off. That call was from a distraught woman by the name of Lois St. Clair. She's requesting our services. Her husband has vanished. Ah, double mystery. Shall we go? A double mystery, Holmes? The disappearance of her husband this morning is but one. Yes, but Lois St. Clair, being the wife of Neville St. Clair, who was unfortunate enough to have had his funeral one month ago, is quite another. Indeed. How would you remember that? It was an unsolved crime. I tend to take note of such as you know. Allow me to get to the bottom of this one, Holmes. I dare say I'm up to the challenge. All right, Watson. The ball is in your court. You shall lead and I shall follow. Let us see what you have learned. Accessing police report. Hmm. It states that Mr. St. Clair met a tragic fate 38 days ago on a moonlit night at the hands of an unknown assailant. That man there, with the scarred lip, he seemed very interested in us. Just a panhandler looking for a handout. Let's go, shall we? My husband's funeral was faked, Mr. Holmes. He's been in hiding for over a month. I suspected as much. The police report documents a moonlit night 38 days ago. However, we've had unrelenting fog for 63 straight days. Very perceptive, Watson. That discrepancy eliminates any possibility that the report was legitimate. So how do you know he has vanished, Mrs. Sinclair? This transpired at seven this morning. I've almost gathered enough, and then I'll be out from under. <gasps> They're on to me. Whatever you do, don't involve the police. I love you, Lois. He projected himself into your home as a hologram. But why? Was he in hiding because of a gambling debt, Mrs. Sinclair? Yes. But my husband was an upstanding investment banker, Dr. Watson. He didn't defraud anyone. I'm terribly sorry, madam, but his aversion to involving the police suggests illegal activity. Combined with his efforts to gather enough and to get out from under, I'm led to believe it's regarding a debt. And thereon to me suggests his creditors had found him out. You're very astute. He did gamble, and he did get behind. So he faked his demise 38 days ago, then went into hiding until he could find the money to pay what he owed. But we didn't fool the mobsters he owed money to. Take heart, dear lady. By tracking down those debts, we shall find your husband. Right, Holmes? I'd like to study the memory buffer in your hollow phone, Mrs. Sinclair. By all means. 
be so kind as to drop me off at Baker Street, would you, Watson? But aren't we starting our investigation at Neville's old office? That's entirely up to you. I have other matters to tend to. You wouldn't be jealous, would you, Holmes? After all, I have taken over your spot in this case. Rather successfully, I might add. I envy no one, Watson. It wastes energy and is not productive. Now, on to Baker Street. Oh, he's jealous, all right. <laughs> Again. Sound only. Yes. I've almost gathered enough, and then I'll be out from under. <gasps> Stop. Omit voice. Amplify and replay. Hmm. I have found your hiding place, Mr. St. Clair. Say, Holmes, you nearly gave me an overload. Sorry, old man. We can't risk being seen. Rather unlikely place to meet, isn't it? On the contrary, Watson. It is the most likely. See there. I detected sounds on a hollow program of both the river and the monorail. But the monorail crosses the river a total of eight times in New London. Yes, Watson, but we can eliminate the others. Remember that Neville's last call came at seven in the morning. This is the only location where it crosses at that hour. Answers await us in a riverfront room with a broken door. And, uh, speaking of answers, Watson, how is your investigation faring? I've disproven my own theory. I have found no records of Neville St. Clair ever having been employed as an investment banker anywhere in the city. And his gambling debts? None. Not even an I.O.U. And regardless of what Mrs. St. Clair believes, they are financially fit. She has been fooled just as I have been. Well, it was a very reasonable theory, Watson. By eliminating it, you have furthered our case. Neville's hollow foam projector! Kicked to pieces by his abductors. Watson, take careful stock of this room. No fear of starving in this flat. What do you deduce by this candle, Watson? The man was obviously forced to use it for illumination. Well, its lack of a holder and these electric lights suggest it served some other purpose. An antique, retractable clothesline. However, there is no hook to secure the clothesline to. Very odd. Hmm, scuff marks on the sill from dark soled shoes. Fallen pocket change. A waxy substance. Perhaps makeup. If it weren't for this fog, my telephotoscope would no doubt detect fallen coins also on the bank below, indicating poor Neville was thrown into the Thames. Yes, that is a possible explanation. Well then, I believe I've solved it, Holmes. Let's just go down and wrap up any loose ends. Aren't you coming? The answers I seek are perhaps still in this room, or soon will be. As expected, more coins. And the watery fate of Neville St. Clair, poor chap. Returning to the scene of the crime, are you? Stop! Stop him, Watson! The man with the twisted lip. Come back here, I say. Who there? Oh. No, no, oh dear. This won't do at all. Impeccable timing, Holmes. Don't mention it, Watson. But <clears throat> perhaps I should take over the driving from here? Nonsense. I've been practicing. See? Oh! Now, if 
if our quarry continues making sudden right turns, then we shall cut him off at the next corner. Nice, Holmes. You banked him right into New Scotland Yard. Not quite the result I intended, but it will do. Hard, though. It almost seems as if he were heading directly here anyway. Initial scans suggest this might be Neville Sinclair's coat. In fact, his seems to be the only DNA on it, meaning this panhandler is somehow connected to Neville's homicide a month ago. Holmes, she seems unaware that the month-old crime was faked and knows nothing of what happened this morning. Has he made a statement, Lestrade? None. Just calls himself Boone. But we'll find out more when we run his prints and DNA. British intelligence officers? Why are they here? It's not for their intelligence, I can tell you that. They started poking around this morning on the Raven case. Or perhaps the St. Clair case as well. Who else would have the resources to falsify a new Scotland Yard crime report? Come again? Neville St. Clair was alive until this very morning, Lestrade. His homicide of a month ago being but a clever ruse. But now he's disappeared for certain. Well, whatever and whenever it happened, Boone's involved either way. And he seems of keen interest to our visiting branch of law enforcement. We'll take him from here, officer. Ah, come with us. Hmm, this mystery hints at greater depths. It's time I fill in some blanks. Mr. Holmes, is it true that a panhandler might know something about the fate of my Neville? I think he knows exactly what happened to your husband, Mrs. St. Clair. <sighs> Neville St. Clair was an imposter. He was not an investment banker, nor a gambler, but a high-ranking member of the Night Ravens. But... but... For a more complete picture, I have combined the memory buffers from both hollow projectors. Begin program. Around us is a holographic depiction of the St. Clair living room. And here is Neville St. Clair, as he appeared that morning. Will anything ever be carefree again? Pause. Notice that Neville is absently stroking a non-existent beard. Now, observe the poster he's looking at. It's a theater poster. That actor looks familiar. He should. Computer, run Neville Enhancement Program Alpha. They're one and the same. Mr. Sinclair was an actor in his early years. Better than you know. Computer, run Neville Enhancement Program Beta. That, uh, that Zuber of the Night Ravens who disappeared last month. 38 days ago to be exact, the very day of Neville's false demise. He was leading a double life? At the very least. He was an undercover agent for British intelligence infiltrating the Night Ravens. But his true identity was discovered 38 days ago, forcing him to fake his death and go into hiding. Continue program. I've almost gathered enough, and then I'll be out from my... <gasps> They're on to me! Pause. He's referring to gathering enough information, not money, as previously postulated. I should have known better than to think I could out-deduce you. Not at all, Watson. Your deductions were soundly based on the evidence. Continue program. Whatever you do, don't involve the police. I love you, Lois. Holmes! That was a burst message! A what? A message condensed into a sound burst that was beamed to a receiver across the street from the Sinclair home and then relayed to British intelligence. Computer, isolate the burst message and decode. With my new identity, I've managed to frequent their outdoor meeting places undetected and have now compiled a member list. I'm ready to come in. Update! Two Ravens have infiltrated the British intelligence as agents and have probably discovered my new identity. 
They may even try to intercept this message. Lestrade, we must find Boo. First Zubar and now a nosy panhandler. Prepare to forget everything you overheard. Permanently. Holmes! He was last seen headed toward the Crypnosis Chamber with those British intelligence phonies. We've no time to lose. Don't worry. There's just a little jolt. Then you won't have a care in the world. Crank it up to full power. over. Even you must realize escaping New Scotland Yard with a hostage is impossible. But I have four hostages. Now, everyone turn around and move slowly out the door. Now, Watson, sleep tight. All clear. Nice move for a panhandler. Yes, but quite basic for a field agent. Neville St. Clair, at your service. Working in conjunction with British intelligence, I am pleased to announce I have broken up the criminal organization known as the Night Ravens. Oh, oh give me a break. He had Zed to do with the bust and knew zilch about British intelligence having Neville undercover. Ugh. Which begs the question, Holmes, how did you know Neville was Boone? Oh, the usual obvious clues, Watson. Neville's burst message mentioned a new identity that allowed him to frequent outdoor raven meetings undetected. Ah, and a commonly ignored panhandler would be the most likely disguise. Then there were the physical clues. After locating the riverfront room where Neville had been in hiding, we found food and storage indicating a continuous occupant. A vanity with lights indicated the candle next to it must have been used for something other than illumination. An old theater trick uses melted wax upon stretched skin to simulate a scar. And near the window were a panhandler's hastily left earnings, coated in stage makeup, suggesting he was a man in disguise, most likely Neville. And then there was Neville's blue coat. It yielded only one person's DNA during Beth's forensic scan, Neville's. I see. By eliminating the possibility that someone else wore the coat, the person wearing it must then be Neville St. Clair himself. Getting arrested as Boone was the only way I could get the attention of the real British intelligence without jeopardizing the mission. But why return to the riverfront room? To get his tin cup, Watson, which contained the hidden data disk that named the members of the Night Ravens. So I naturally assumed you to be Raven operatives chasing after me. Sorry about that tow truck mishap, Dr. Watson. Completely understandable. One nice, carefree breakfast, as ordered. The first of many, I hope, now that I'm retired from a life undercover. New London's lost, Mr. St. Clair, but a find for your lovely wife. Thank you, Mr. Holmes, for everything. Are you sure we can't convince you to stay for breakfast? Very much appreciated, ma'am. But no, we must be going. I'm overdue at a recital.